Um, a lot of people say I me. Mean, well, not a lot. I wouldn't really say a lot. Like I would say, like people have said things like, um, "Abba, Abba, Quran firhino Quran masakate." No ne. Like they, they, they sort of um, intersect what I do with my with with my gender. But I don't think that's right. Like, if I do um, camera work or if I go fishing or whatever, it does not make me a man. It makes me a strong woman. It does not, like, I don't really have to um, um, justify my gender based on what I do. My gender has already been justified on my date of birth. I don't have to justify that throughout my life. So what I do, what I do to hang out or whatever, as long as I don't hurt people or affect the society in any way. I feel like photography or fishing or like whatever, the, whatever men is supposed, supposed, to, supposed to do, even a girl can do that. Like we have two arms, two legs, we have protein, we were given breast milk, you know, we were given an education to stand up our own feet. But hey, like after your studies, you're what? Supposed to cut onions uh, and garlic, which is completely fine, but you know what I mean. My full name is Fatma Dashra Fahim, but the only person who calls me Ashwa is basically my mom. Um, everyone else calls me Ava. Um, apparently, I, when I was a kid, I was trying to pronounce Ashwa, and I accidentally said Ava, and that, so that somehow kind of stuck on. So yeah, um, everyone really knows me by Abba. And um, I've, I've been taking pictures for the past seven to eight years now. Okay, one of my earliest memories when it came to photography was like, when I was 15, my aunt was like, what do you want for your birthday gift? And I was like, hmm. For some really random reason, I wanted a camera. And then she was like, you're too young to have a camera. And then my uncle persuaded her and she's like, you know, let's just give her a camera, it's harmless. So that's when I, I kind of like started toying around with the camera when I was 15. But I still knew like that wouldn't really get me anywhere. Like my cousin used to have a digital camera, but since I was really, really small, my cousin would let me touch it only for 10 seconds. Like he would have a countdown, 10, 9, 8, and I'll be like, oh my God, the camera, what does this button do? What does this button do? What does this button do? I was so excited, but I would only get 10 seconds to touch it because I was like 15, like who would give? an expensive camera to 15 year old, who is very clumsy, by the way. So, um, yeah, it's just like, I, I, got, I start from 10 seconds to like, it's my career, and it's quite a contrast, quite a contrast. But I think it, it's a push of the family that really brought me here, because as a girl, to do photography or to even to be a photojournalist, I mean, no one would be like, oh yeah, my daughter is a photographer. Like, I think they're more proud of professions that you want your child to be in, 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 in this country. So I would have to say my family's trust in me that, that really pushed me like out the boundaries to be uh, a photographer, really. Um, after my diploma in photography in Malaysia, I came back to Maldives and I was like, okay, it's time for me to start working now. I was 22, fresh from uni. So um, I started working in Raja TV because, you know, that's why journalism, like why I can really exercise my talent and my passion. So um, obviously, uh, working in Raj TV would, would mean that I'll be involved with a lot of politics. And politics meant a lot of protests on the streets. So it meant like I had to be out there. Like I can't just be like for eight hours in a room, do some writing or edit some pictures and go home. For me as a photojournalist, it meant that I had to be out on the streets, out in the public. Like I was the messenger between what was happening and between the public. So I also had a responsibility to bring that message to the public in the most accurate way possible. So I was like, okay, during my first few months, uh, I noticed that um, I wasn't really being sent out to the protests. They would instead send the guys out and they would let me handle the studio work. I'm like, okay, I will take care of the studio, take care of the lighting. Um, we're going out on the street, take it to the protest. I was like, all right, cool. But I started realizing, like, hey, I'm really passionate about going out there, you know, like being in the, in the circus, you know, being out there in the wild with the camera and, you know, documenting. Like, what's there to document if you work in the studio? So uh, I, 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 I put a complaint. I was like, hey, um, hi, um, can I go to the protest? And they were like, oh, guys, Ashra wants to go to the protest. So I was like, yeah, I, hell yeah, I do. And um, 
So they start eventually sending me, out, sending me out to the protest. I'm just like, wow. Can I, can I be a photographer when I grow up? And I realize, wow, I already am. Like, I'm already living that, you know? Uh, even like eight years later, I still have those moments, wow, can I be a photographer when I grow up? And I realize I already am. So I do have those moments where I'm really grateful that I chose what I really want to choose despite, you know, the people around me who would choose other more appropriate occupations. So I'm really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I fought for that. But yeah, um, even though they allowed me to go to the protests, like there were like a bit of, I experienced a lot of sexism, um, but I'm not surprised, you know, like, I mean, I don't expect them to think the way that I think or believe in things that I believe because they didn't read the books I read or they didn't go to schools that I went or they didn't grow up in a family that I grew up in. So everybody grew up or they were influenced in different kind of books and people. So I don't really expect them to believe or, you know, act in ways that I act. I respect, you know, whatever, they, uh, whatever path they choose to go in. Um, one time I was um, traveling to former Pre President Mohammed Nasheed to about 30, 40 islands in Kanneli Dhoni. Um, and I was basically practically the only female on that boat. Um, and going to those islands was quite inspiring as a Maldivian to see all that. And holding a camera makes the experience even better. And to follow um, a leader like himself, um, meeting people, greeting people, and to be in front of all that, and to be able to deliver that message to the people through images was quite inspiring. And all the other negative things were kind of blurred out because I'm constantly being inspired to be who I am as a photographer or video, uh, videographer. Like the inspiration sort of blurred out all the negativity. Um, yeah, we carried a lot of um, heavy equipments and I would have to jump from boat to boat with wires and all that. And there would be people, like random people in the islands like, who are fans of Raj TV also would approach me like, um, uh, and I was like, well, you know, well, it's a compromise, you know, like you, you do what you love and like being passionate about something is how, how willing you are to like give pain, to suffer to what you do. Like nothing in life is pain free or whatever. There's always a cost to something you do. And just because me being a girl doesn't make it you know, less appropriate, you know what I mean? So, so like, yeah, there's a lot of neg negativity and all. And I think one of the reasons why it, didn't, it did not really affect me is because I know where it's coming from. Like, I know, like, how the society is, the status, of, the status of it. And I don't blame the people who think it's not okay for girls to do this. Uh, it's just their inability to, um, I think, think beyond what they've been told, think beyond what they've seen. I think, and I don't, I'm, I don't like have any hatred towards those people. I just, I just, I just wish that, I just hope that they will know someday that it's okay for girls to do whatever they want. Like, it doesn't really matter. So, um, uh, looking back the past eight years, like, what I really feel is gratitude, nothing but gratitude for all the opportunities that I've, get, I've got and the fact that my family supported me so much, believed in my talent and everything. Um, but even more so, today, like eight years later, I feel a sense of responsibility, to be honest. Like all the opportunities, like the education and um, all the classes and all, this, uh, all the mentors, all these uh, amazing photographers and people that I've met, who I've spoken to, have had dinner with. And now I'm like, sitting here in Mali and I'm like, I feel a sense of responsibility to do something with my talent. You know what I mean? Not just like, take pictures and put on Instagram or, or expect some likes. Like, I'd rather do something that's, uh, that, that, that can provoke the social change, something that can trigger a conversation, a dialogue within the society. I feel like, like, I do feel guilty sometimes, like, oh my God, am I doing enough? Like, there's just always so much more you can do, you know what I mean? Like, um, sometimes I ask myself, can photography change the world? And I was like, oh my, that's too optimistic. I've always been the irrationally optimistic person. but. I don't know, like photography is something that is understood universally. Like you can learn, you have to learn to read, you have to learn to write, but you don't have to learn to understand a picture, no matter what, what kind of politics you're into or um, social background, you all, you, no matter who you are, you understand a picture. And I feel like photography is very powerful for that reason. It can be instrumental to pass on messages across the world beyond languages like, you know, like, you don't need to, like, learn a specific language or understand a picture. So for that reason, I feel like photography is quite powerful and I feel like a responsibility
to be a Maldivian in a society where social change is very much needed, I feel like there's so much I can do with my work. <laughs>